Hey you guys, it's Peter and welcome to my channel Peterisms where I tell stories of my life and just little things that I have learned as I have grown into the person that I am today. And I know that the lighting is horrible out here, but it is 64 degrees in Indianapolis today in February. I can hardly believe it. Uh, so I thought I would take the opportunity to sit outside on the patio. The cushions aren't even on the chairs anymore because it's not spring or summer. And I thought I would do my meditations out here and just kind of be in nature today and just kind of find some peace and serenity, be of the, the world, of the universe for a second, and kind of just listen to all the sounds. Um, I was just taking the dogs, you know, out in the backyard, and they were running around, and I was standing out there, and I was just kind of like noticing the birds and the squirrels and the rabbits and listening to all the sounds. And, you know, I talk about reading meditations often, but, you know, Meditation back in the day, um, before it had kind of this new age, you know, I concept that it does today, often just meant deep thought. And I was standing out there and I was thinking about Pee Pee when he used to run around in the backyard and I was just kind of connecting with my emotions and my feelings of the day and then I was turning that into gratitude for having had the experience to have such an amazing dog for so long and um, you know, then I was looking at Boo and Tucker and I was like, I'm so grateful to have them and the experiences that I have with them and I was just kind of practicing gratitude as I was walking around in the backyard. It doesn't take a lot, you know, to practice meditation, as we say. I mean, we can just kind of get into deep thought in our heads in a positive way and kind of like turn it into, you know, positivity and gratitude and things like that. And that's often what I try to do. So um, I picked a couple of books that I want to read from and I'm going to start. I actually, last night I read a meditation in the Nightlight book. So I'm going to read that first. <clears throat> and um, it's not the February 1st one that was last night. I did read that one, but it was from January 31st, and I hadn't read that one. So I want to read that one to you guys because I really liked it. January 31st. Hitch your wagon to a star. Ralph Waldo Emerson. How often have we struggled to do something alone, refusing to have another help us? Maybe we single-handedly cooked a meal for a family get-together or moved a piece of furniture or plotted slowly through some confusing work without assistance. Instead of asking for help to make our job go smoother, we chose to take care of it all ourselves. While we probably accomplished what was needed, where did that get us? Our ancestors settled this land by helping one another. Lands were discovered by bands of exploration parties. Barns were raised by communities. Crops were harvested by many hands. That same pioneer spirit extends today to the program, where each member pulls another through good times and bad. Succeeding alone means we have survived. Succeeding with others means we have truly lived. We were not put into this life to survive without others, but to live with them. By joining ourselves with humanity around us, we have joined that spirit which connects us all. I can be a pioneer and share my humanity with others. How are my brothers and sisters tonight? I love that meditation. Um, you know, I think wherever you go, whether it's like, you know, to the grocery store that you go to often and you see like a cashier there that you know, or, um, you know, whether it's the gym or a church function or a 12 step meeting or whatever it is where you go on a regular basis or an athletic event, maybe you see the same person over and over and you guys kind of like say hi and whatever. And you're like, I wish we, I was friends with that person, but you're always afraid to like lean out and ask that person. You know, I think that we wonder in this day and age how to make new friends and that's really what it is. I mean, we learned that, you know, in kindergarten and to just reach out to somebody else and be like, hi, I'm Peter. Oh, you're Julie. Okay. You want to, you know, swing on the swing set together. It's really that simple. But then when you take it to another level, but I don't do that even like, I'm even afraid of doing that. My social anxiety keeps me from doing that. But that is a goal that I have made for 2020 is that I want to reach out more to people that I don't know, not just in 12 step programs, which I've really practiced that there. And I feel like I am comfortable doing it there, but really all over, you know, um, at the gym, at the grocery store, whatever, you know, and just be a friendlier, more welcoming person all around. Um, but I think the meditation is really talking about allowing people to help us. I know many people in my life, and I was this person at one time, that saw doing something by myself as a strength. My mother was very much that person, I got that from her, um, that she almost felt empowered by just doing something on her own. And there's a lot to be said for that, there really is, right? On, you know, like I remember when my ex and I broke up, you know, he was definitely the technological person in the relationship, and now with Alex, like neither one of us are, you know? And so I had bought like this table to put together from like Target, because I didn't, we didn't have Ikea back then 
And so I didn't know how to put it together, right? And I remember it was like this very, very simple table. It was basically like, you know, three pieces and then like the screws or whatever. And when I got it done, I was so proud of myself. This is like probably, you know, 12 years ago or something, but I was so proud of myself. I was like, oh my God, I got it done on my own, right? So that, I think there is something to be said about being empowered to do something on our own and learning new skills and tools. But there isn't anything wrong with asking somebody else to teach us as well. You know, people are put in our lives to be teachers. Um, you know, my old sponsor, he used to always say to me, you know, it's like, um, if a tree fell down, could you pick up the tree and could you carry it to, from one place to the next? And I'd be like, no, of course not. Like a huge tree, right? Of course not. And I would, he would say, okay, well, you know, what if you took a chainsaw and you cut up the tree into like, you know, a hundred pieces? Could you then carry it piece by piece? And I was like, yeah, absolutely. And he was like, okay, then if you ask me to help you carry it piece by piece. And I was like, oh yeah, that I definitely could do. So we're really lightening our load. We're making it easier for ourselves. We're asking other people to join in with us. And then we're having community. That's called fellowship and community when we're interacting with other people. There's no shame in asking somebody for help. You know, I remember years and years and years ago, you know, this uh, having an opportunity where w this woman said to me, she said, what's the worst that could happen? And I said that you would say no, you know, and it's like, we have to ask people for help. We have to learn to be able to ask people for help and be willing to put a, pr aside our pride in our ego that we are the end all and we can do everything on our own. Um, you know, when I have asked others for help, it has just tightened the bond. It has made us closer. It has, you know, given me stories to tell down the road of funny things that happen with us, you know? And I really think that's what life is about. Even if it's just like going to your neighbor, you know, like our neighbor came to us not too long ago and asked for like a skillet. And it was so funny because it's like, do neighbors do that anymore? Do they go next door and ask for, you know, a cup of sugar or, you know, whatever? And I, I don't think so. I don't think as much as we used to. And I thought it was nice. You know, I, I like those kinds of things. So I think it's a fantastic meditation. I think all of us could reach out to others more and also be the person that reaches out, you know? to help other people. So, all right, the next meditation I'm gonna read from is Daily Book of Positive Quotations by Linda Pacone, and it is from February 2nd. Living every day. May you live all the days of your life. Jonathan Swift. How often do we ask ourselves, as if waking from a dream, where has the time gone? What happened to yesterday, last week, last month, last year? Our lives are all that we have on earth, and yet, how many days do we let slip by without living them as fully as we might? Amen. Living every day doesn't have to mean trying to achieve something significant every moment that we're conscious. No one could sustain a life like that. It just means doing something each day that adds value to our lives and the lives of others. I will do something today that will make me feel that I have really lived it. I love this meditation. Um... I guess I had all these pre preconceived ideas as I got older, like what getting older would be like. And one of the things I didn't really get would was that I would have this overwhelming feeling that I just wanted to stop time. I just wanted, you know, and this was even made clearer to me when PP got sick and then passed away, was that I just wanted to stop time. I just wanted time to stop. Um, I felt like life was going by way too fast, you know? Um, and I woke up one day and it's like, okay, I'm 47 years old. And yeah, I have an amazing life. I love my life, but I want it to slow down. I want it to stop. You know, before I know it, I'm gonna be 50 and 55 and 60. I can't borrow time either. I don't wanna borrow trouble and borrow time and be jumping forward and all that kind of stuff. I wanna enjoy each and every day. Um, but I think it's about how we spend our time. You know, like I talked about goals that I've set for 2020. I haven't sat down and set them all yet, but I've been writing down some of them that I want to do and one of them is that I really want to make a conscious effort of just enjoying being present in 2020 and watching Netflix shows and reading more audiobooks. You guys are actually sitting on two books. You're sitting on um, The Savage Song by, by Victoria Schwab and the Hocus Pocus sequel because um, I had to <laughs> move you up. But to really just enjoy my time more, you know, last night I started reading this audiobook. And um, depressingly enough, it's a true crime book about the DC shooter. It's called I Am God, and it's an Audible original, and it's fantastic. It is absolutely fantastic. And I found myself just, like, not wanting to go to bed because it was so good, you know? And I think that that's what we have to do is it's, like, important for us to actually, you know, enjoy the time that we have with things that we love to do. That doesn't mean that you don't put good out there in the world, you know? Um, my dad, when I was growing up, you know, two pieces of advice that my dad gave me about finding a career and doing something, he said... First of all, do what you love and the money will follow. And if the money doesn't follow, then at least you do something that you love. 
which I think is important sentiment. And the second thing he said to me when I was growing up was, I don't care what, my parents were very, very supportive of me doing whatever I wanted to do. And he said, I don't care what you do as long as you're making a positive contribution to the world. And so, you know, each and every day that I wake up, I ask myself, whether it's through volunteer work, through charity work, which I rarely talk about that I do a lot of on here, 12 step work, you know, like writing my books that I'm still going to put out at some point, you know, not just the one that I have out, you know, YouTube videos I talk about, whatever I'm doing, like I ask myself, am I making a positive contribution am I making somebody laugh you know sometimes on my drama video like the the most meaningful comments are when people come to me and they say like I've had such a hard week and this is the first laugh that I had of the week like that means so much to me you know that I was able to lighten somebody's day it's just like this amazing thing right and so I think we have to ask ourselves every single day are we doing something to positively contribute to the world I love that idea you know and to consciously think that way like what am I doing to positively contribute to the do I say contribute to the <laughs> positively contribute to the world on a daily basis and it can be something small you know, it can be really something small. It can just be cheering somebody up when you see them at the Walmart and being like, hey, how are you? Like, oh my God, I love your sweater, you know, or, you know, you look so nice today. <laughs> Whatever. Not, maybe not the sweater. That's from the Mean Girls movie, you know, like, but you know what I mean? Like, just to cheer somebody up and be like, you know, like, hey, it's great to see you or, you know, whatever. Um, people like to be remembered. I like to be remembered. I like when I go places and people remember who I am and I think all people feel that way. It's validation, you know? And so to go to a cashier or whatever and remember them and let them know that your service is important to me because I come in here regularly and I see you and I remember you, you know? Um, and I think that just treating people the way that we want to be treated. So. We, like I said in my video the other day, we only have so many hours, so many minutes, so many days, so many seconds on this earth. How we spend it is ours. And it's a choice we have every single day that we wake up to decide, how am I gonna spend today? What am I gonna do with my minutes? Where am I gonna give my minutes? You know, it's not missed on me that I, and I really, really appreciate it that so many of you choose to spend your minutes with me on several videos, on several channels. Um, that just like, is so powerful to me, you know, that you're giving part of your life to me and I appreciate it. How are we choosing to spend our lives? What are we choosing to do with it, you know? For me, it sometimes flows into, I was going to read for Mindful Evening, but I'm not going to. Sometimes for me, it's hard because it flows over into being so driven that I feel like I got to do this, I got to do that, I got to do this, I got to do that, right? And then I don't relax enough, you know, thus the, the circles under the eyes kind of thing. But in 2020, I'm going to try to relax a lot more because um, I think we need to enjoy our lives and life is a gift. Life is a gift, and we have to remember that. I have to remember that, you know, every single day. Um, that this life that I was given is very precious, and how I choose to spend it, you know, is representative of of my life as a whole. So anyway, let me know what you guys uh, think about these meditations. I hope you're having a fantastic Sunday. Have, happy Super Bowl Sunday. I love you. Touchdown to life. And I, that was so stupid. And I will see you tomorrow. Bye.